Waking COP where it's not very spectacular, it's not sort of revolutionary steps forward, but it's rather insisting steps forward and that is very, very important. But the NGOs have a very different take. They say it's, it's effectively a failure because you've got no reduction on emissions and no cash on the table. How do you respond to that? I say that yes, NGOs always or almost have a duty to, to say so and when I think back at the nine COPs I participated in, there are really not many COPs where the NGOs afterwards went out and said, oh, this was progress. Nonetheless, I think you will have a hard time to find an NGO who would say that we did not make progress over the nine, uh, last nine years. Uh, so COPs are very, very hard work. The steps are not as big as we would like in Europe, but we are moving forward. Why is it difficult? Because some countries who today do not have commitments, so also some big economies, they of course have an interest in trying to slow down the day where they actually also must commit. Others say we want more ambition and there in the middle I think we have the European Union trying to unite these things, trying to keep things together with other progressive forces, other developing countries and take and cash in whatever we can get climate change conference after climate change conference. Now, on, on that point, there's uh, a lot of arguments saying that it's, if it's as difficult as this now, when it comes to 2015 and you've actually got to put real de deals on the table with all these countries, developing and developed countries, how is that going to work? No, that's clear. That is also our concern from EU when we listen to what has been said here the, throughout this day, for instance. So we have very, very tough work in ahead of us. The only thing I can hope for is that the evidence that we see in the nature around us, the fact that more and more people actually suffer from climate change, that the Americans can see what the consequences of droughts or super storm Sandy or whatever is and many other people around the planet do the same, that that will make the pressure mount on governments who move with two small steps. So that, I think, can be one thing that will send a very clear message to politicians in the next two or three years before we have to make the final deal. But also we have made here progress on how to add on to ambition in the short term. And in the European Union we will take the initiative simply to gather partners around very specific things. It's not rocket science, how to, fossil, how to phase out fossil fuel subsidies for instance. That is not an easy thing, but I know a lot of countries would like to join a partnership on this. Energy efficiency, f gases there are many things where you do not have to wait for the next climate COP. You can just start doing it. Just one final point. It was almost looking like we got a deal until right to the very end and the Russians had their little say. Were you concerned that it was going to fall apart? Always at climate COPs there is this moment uh, and sometimes it takes a long, it's a very long moment as today, where you really do not know whether all the pieces will, will come together. They came together, but it's clear that Russia uh, was not very supportive of what was happening. So that is also a challenge for, for the future. Uh, but in the end, uh, I think that when we look back at this some time from now, it was some necessary steps forward. It's a fantastic, no way you could make me say that. I think one interesting thing is, I hope, will we'll stay in this region that hosted the conference, that also the, the Gulf uh, region will actually start to address climate change. When you look out, you can see that the potential for energy efficiency is also here very big as it is in most places around the world. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.